Welcome to the Broski Dittles podcast, the best podcast in all of the land. It's your boy Kiko Flow, Kiko Cervantes, Activo en la Pista, Chef Maurice, as always, with me here. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a beautiful day to be alive. You got the, the Arizona Diamondbacks? That's it. God damn it! I know my fucking teams. Um, Beautiful day. I've been pondering on a few things, right? One of them being, actually, I don't know. I haven't been pondering, actually. What have you been doing? I've been watching a lot of uh, movies, documentaries. I recently watched the the movie about the the miracle or tragedy that happened in the Andes, where a plane filled with Uruguayans, uh, rugby players, crashed in the Andes Mountains, Andes Mountains, Los Andes, and they actually survived, uh, some of them, and it's a great story, and it's now on Netflix, and we're not sponsored, but they should. Uh, it's did, called uh, The Society of the Snow. Did they eat each other out? You could say that. Mm. You could say that. I mean, I don't want to spoil anything. <laughs> no pun intended. Spoil endings. <laughs> spoil meat. But yeah, it's um, it, it's a very strong movie. Uh, and it, you know, it really touches on survival. Um, but imagine like any other situation of life and death, how you would react and and how you would go against maybe your natural, not your natural your preconceived notions, but then your instinct kicks in and you actually do things that you didn't think were possible. You know, have you ever, when you see movies, think like, God damn it, if I was in that situation, would I have done that, would I have done this? And I don't know, I, I start thinking like, fuck, uh, what if I, would, I just froze and I didn't do anything? I, I would like to think that I would have, you know, done the thing. So, sometimes I think about it and I'm like, no, nah, I probably would die. You probably would die. Okay. It's like I, I would try, but I know sometimes that I don't know. I'll just give up. Like, eh. okay. Eh. Uh, do we have to eat that guy's penis to survive? I don't want to. But that's what you say. <laughs> on, until you're ten days in. Yeah. No, no right. food. Now that that frozen penis looks enticing. Maybe you, you already walked a certain amount and then you're like, maybe we should just go back and eat that dick. It happens. Yeah. I mean... And I think you have this taboo, yeah. this little judgment about it. No, bro. I mean, okay. <laughs> Let me ask you the question straight up. So, you know, in the movie, I mean, in, in, in the story, I mean, if you know about it, they had to resort to cannibalism, right? eating the, 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 the meat of the people that have died so that they can survive. And you think of it, and it's like crazy, right? Like there was this <laughs> uh, crazy story in Venezuela of a guy that would eat people. He was a cannibal, but he was like a criminal. Just for fun. Yeah, for fun. Like for shits and giggles, he would make like <laughs> empanadas. <laughs> <laughs> but oh. these pe you know, the, these kids in the, in the Andes Mountains, they had to do it uh, you know, for, for survival. Do you think you could do it, or would you be the one that's like, no, I'm dying. I'm not eating people meat. I mean, I, I would like to think that I would do it. I want to survive. I don't want to fucking die. But at the same time, it's like, maybe it's just because we're not in that position yet that you're like, no, nah, I don't want to do that shit. This but is the if thing. you're in that position, you have to do it. I if, I, if I'm trapped in the Andes Mountains, in the cold, and we need to chop somebody's up, I'm thinking of you as like, he's an asset because you manage the knives in the kitchen. Now, mm. are you going to have the balls to do it or are you going to pussy out when you see wow. you know, it's Juanita? <laughs> uh, fuck, I, I don't know. going to make birria tacos with this shit. <laughs> I mean, you, you you put it that way. I would, I would fucking love to... <laughs> Because I, I almost think though. like you could go into this mental state where you could block out that it's a person and you're mm. like, oh, this is just another, you know, uh, pig that I'm cutting up and putting it in different pieces. You know, which one is good for drying with the, you know, salt. The other one, you know, the cheek is more, it's a little softer so you can use that on like morning tacos. The good thing is that 
if we both die in that accident, they'll have food for days. Yeah. Right. They have. I mean, and that's that, what, that goes and that, without saying. Yeah, and that's what we give back. Right. We, we like, gave back to the community. In in the movie, because it was such a controversial thing, people would say, "Look, if I die, you can use my body," and they all said it, kind of like a pact. That way, it wasn't. You know, it was a little more accepting. In in our cases, I mean, right away, you know, if we don't make it, please, you know, feast, as they say. You know, fill up. I, I, but then you put it that way that, you know, somebody perishes, somebody dies in the group, and then you have to cut them up. And, I mean, you're hoping it's someone that maybe you don't know that much. Maybe he's not that tight with you and, and the crew, but in this case it is because in the movie this is a rugby Ooh, team, so they're right, all they're friends. Team, they're friends, right? Yeah, if it's a commercial uh, flight and it's just a bunch of random people, kill Darius. I mean, not kill it, just cut yeah, him no, up. just wait, wait, wait until they die. I mean, I, I prefer. I think it's best you wait until they they you know, perish. Perish. Yeah, I like that word. <laughs> Makes it sound a little nicer. And then you get to the you know nitty gritty. I don't know. And, and you, well, you know one thing I was started thinking is is it what happens if you start eating? I mean, not that we're gonna. It's not like we're gonna do it, but if somebody starts eating human meat, right? But they continue to do so. Not like these kids that they did it for some days. Like, is that bad for you? Because like, I guess a tiger mm. could eat a tiger and fish it, eat fish. But what happens if a human? Like, I'm almost certain. If humans eat human meat, you're going to Google that? <laughs> That's a weird one to have. But yeah, but Google something <laughs> like, what happens? Like, is it bad for you if you eat human meat? I mean, that's a very weird question. Hey, is it wrong? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we should, we should ask Dorangel. So Dor Dorangel who... Diaz, I think was his name. Vargas, Vargas. Vargas, Dorangel Vargas is what they call him the come gente, the, the people eater. It's a famous criminal in, in Venezuela. It kind of looked like Charles Manson that would eat people. And he once uh, had one of his best friends. He killed him. He grabbed the meat from his leg and made empanadas. And he said, the empanadas taste just so good. And I'm not even fucking like, this is not trolling. This is not kidding. He said the empanadas taste so good, the empanadas, because the meat was of his friend who was such a nice person. And because of that, the meat was good. Right. And I like that nice logic. And tender. Like, he's a criminal, he's a fucking demented fuck. But the fact that he was like, no, he tastes better because he was a good person. There's a little bit like, a little bit of a nice little touch to it. Like, to me, he's like the type of guy that you would want to chill with maybe one day, but, you know, stay away from. I want to think that I would be a, a nice A5 grade Wagyu beef. I eat good. I do my little massages from now and then, you know. So I think the the fat in my meat is nicely consistent. It's nice, nice marbling. I mean, I, I think it's it's nice to think like that. However, I think you and me are more mm -hmm. in the category of pigs that have been genetically fed <laughs> more, and we're just like I mean, I mean, don't get me wrong. We have a purpose. I mean, we serve a mm. lot. It's kind of like when the sailors would get a, a whale in the ocean, not only would they have meat, but the skin have so much oil, the fat, that they could even use that as oil for lambs, mm -hmm. for cooking. Imagine the thickness of our fat layer. <laughs> you could do like like um, uh, chicharrón, pork Oof. belly. Mm. So Human belly. Yeah, human. I mean, straight up, I didn't want to say it like that, but. <laughs> so I Googled it. Okay. <laughs> and the first thing that comes up, it says, although it may seem wrong, <laughs> <laughs> the good news is that consuming cooked human flesh is no more dangerous than eating cooked flesh of other animals. Wait, wait, wait. I love the editing on this. Although it might seem wrong, <laughs> it's actually <good> pretty cool. <laughs> I mean, I'm just thinking, if there is a group in the world of ethical human eaters, cannibals, right? Like, what's their um, source? Like, do they only go for people that <laughs> die naturally and then they donate their body? I mean, like, how the fuck does this work? Mm. Where is this website you're seeing? <laughs> uh, do, do you think they have, like, a like a black market? 
Are we gonna go too deep? That's we're gonna sinister get... as fuck, right, bro? Some... I don't even think there's a movie about this. I mean, we gotta keep this to ourselves. We can make like a script and sell this, like a group of elite motherfuckers. You know, like the elite motherfuckers that get blood transfusion from babies, or mm -hmm. you know, or do the sound of freedom things. You know, imagine motherfuckers that like eat human flesh, and it's a delicacy, delicacy. And there's like chefs that are professional at it, bro. This is a movie, a really good one, like Eli Roth. Wow, it's gonna be a little so, graphic. I I don't know how I fell into this this website. And it says, it gives you like different, so this person says that human meat is like fully developed veal. Okay. This other person says, it's like pork. It tastes quite good. And then this one, this one's the one that fucked me up. This one says, so sweet. That's the end of the quote, right? But who said it? This, uh. Egyptian born fashion model describing the cooked meats, sorry, the cooked ribs of the abusive husband who she killed in 1991. So, this lady is saying that her husband's ribs are quite sweet. Is it because revenge is sweet? Okay, I so now I'm getting back, it. So, baby, these are back, cases, I mean, maybe not all of them, but at least this lady, she's eating the piece of shit that abused her. And she's sucking on her fucking fingers. This motherfucker is good. Sweet. I mean, on a level there, that's pretty gangster. Yeah. She might be on above uh, Al Capone and all this motherfucker. She's... I want to see if... I don't want to say her name, but I'm going to look at pictures to see if... I mean, I do find it weird these people are leaving those comments like they're very casual reviews. You know what I mean? Like, like, uh, like she, it, it she's tastes, yelping. It tastes like veal with a touch of wood. <laughs> Bro, okay. Talking well. about crazy shit like this, I remember when I was in Portugal, I sent you a review from a coffee place that it was one of the craziest reviews I've ever seen. And it had to do with like shit like this. And I'm, while well, I'm speaking to you, I'm hoping I can find it. Um, but you know, please speak in the meantime. <laughs> no, I'm I'm just reading this the story of this lady and and how she they got married within days of of meeting each other and mm -hmm. this motherfucker uh, sexually abused her and I mean now going to like a, a serious note is is it okay what she did? I mean, of course, eating some another person or or. But she she needed to get away from the pain that he was inflicting in her. And her way was to, unfortunately, kill this guy, right? Unfortunately, because she, she's in jail now for 30 years to life. So it's unfortunate for her that her cons... But, you know, it's, it's a little bit of the good and the bad. You want to get away from this problem, but you put yourself in another problem that perhaps just I mean, up your let's be life. honest here uh, if you want to kill them and also eat them there's something there that's uh that's a bit something weird. extra right hey, i found the review so <laughs> listen to this review this don't, is don't a, say names i don't want i don't want this is a coffee place <laughs> in lisbon portugal okay Starbucks. and, and I, I you gotta love the casualness of the review but also the mm, the, the the shock right so this is what it is quote it used to be a great cafe, but now there's an employee there who made me decide to never go back there again. He left with a live dove in one hand and a stick in the other hand. And in front of the, all the people there who were passing by, he killed the dove with a club and left it dead right there next to the cafe. Then he must have gone to serve some drinks. Honestly, brutality. Oof. I mean, he did what he needed to do. He wanted to see his customers happy. It is true. It, it is true. Portugal is a very peculiar place. But, um, <laughs> I mean, that was pretty crazy, right? It would have been funny if, if at the bottom she said, the coffee is pretty good, though. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. I'm, 
I'm, I'm reading about this story and it just keeps getting weirder and weirder. After killing him, she began dismembering his body and cooked his head and boiled his hands to remove the fingerprints. So it seems like she planned this shit. Like it's, it seems more planned than unplanned. She then mixed up his body parts with leftover turkey, disgusting, turkey, disgusting, and disposed of him in the garbage disposal. So, I mean, originally her intention was that nobody would find out that she did this. Right. That's what the, I guess that's what makes it uh, premeditated. Mm. Um, oh, she reportedly castrated him in revenge for his alleged sexual assaults. Wow. I mean, I, ju I was just thinking, because I said earlier, like, oh, yeah, there's we should make a movie about this. There's literally a movie called Hannibal, which is about, <laughs> you know, cannibal uh, that enjoys eating humans. Um, so, yeah, I mean, there goes that idea. But I mean, you know, we got to keep the positivity. We're, we're still doing. We're still doing uh, the Lord's work. Uh, she's God serving a life in sentence in California. Yeah, she's still alive. I mean, she's pretty scary, right? Uh, in jail. She don't, don't fuck around. Me. She'll oh, eat you. you. She'll, she'll make you in a fucking kebab. Well, I mean, you're not far from where she's from. Where she's from? Egypt. Oh, Egypt. I mean, I'm a little closer, <laughs> she... but I wouldn't say I'm close. No, I mean, you weren't far by insinuating that she made kebabs. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, true, true. Oh, okay, so the joke has many layers. Yeah, it's like yeah. an onion. <laughs> um, okay. No, I mean, cannibalism is, is, is a crazy thing. Uh, don't do it. Don't do it. I mean, it's not, <laughs> it's, it's, not, it's, not, it's not what it's made out to be, if I can be honest. Um, <laughs> so it's best to... It's best I mean, to not do it. Right. But if you're in circumstances like the ones in the movie that you saw, and, and mm -hmm. which is a, a real story, mm -hmm. um, then there has to be an okay factor on it. Like, all right, this is what, what we have to do to survive. It's disgusting. It's wrong. But we need to survive. I want to go back home. I want to see my family. So this is what I need to do. So I guess, yes, in the end, you're going to have to do it if if your end goal is to to survive so yeah it sucks you don't want to see your friends die but you also don't want to die right and maybe it is true that the friends that are nicer taste like better i gotta say that you might taste good i said you're a very good friend and i, I give sweet. you permission if we're ever in the mountains and i i die and you need me to survive, please, you know, do it. Okay. okay. Do you want me to start anywhere in particular or you just, doesn't matter? I mean, I think maybe leave my, my dick and balls for like the last, you know, go, go, okay. maybe, maybe start with like the leg. Okay. And nice I think I'll, that, that's probably more comfortable for you to start with too. Like, I mean, legs. I still have to see your. I still have to see your dick and balls. Yeah, I mean that's I another thing out. too. I want you to see my dick and balls throughout the whole time you're eating me. <laughs> it's kind of like what you have to pay, and then and at the, the end you thing, get them as a prize. <laughs> the good thing is that if we're in the snow, I can just cover you with snow, and then it'll keep you from. Yeah, I mean, just like in the spoiling. movie, they kept the bodies like in a refrigerator type thing, but mm -hmm. it was just a snow. Right. And it kind of like dries a little bit, so it's a little bit like beef jerky mixed jerky. with. Yeah, it's. Uh, I'll be honest with you, it isn't what it's made out to be, but it also isn't that bad. <laughs> I would say, I would say average three point five experience. Three and a half out of five. You know, so it's not that bad. Would repeat. Would repeat, right? <laughs> uh, I would say if if we're in that same situation, you. You can you can eat me out. I'm I'm okay with that. All right. I, I, maybe I'll start with a titty. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'm okay uh, with that. You know this this topic seems a little crude, but yeah. I, I started thinking, 
how many people can be out there that actually would get offended by this? Like, you pieces of shit. My uncle ate my dad. Like, how many of those could there be? And they were still both alive. So maybe they were in a gay relationship. What if somebody ate you, but only like part of you, like a leg, and you're still alive? <laughs> like an amputation? Yeah, but by, you know. By eating? Yeah, a culinary amputation. <laughs> <coughs> <clears throat> no, but I'm telling you, there's got to be a, a, a small circle of crazy fucks that part of what they do is eat human meat and they get it. <clears throat> there's got to be, bro. There's, there's crazy people in the world for everything. There's got to be a crazy group that eat people. Um, now, if, I mean, if you say it like that, yes. It kind of makes sense that somewhere in the world there has to be a, a community that does that. You know, <laughs> grandma died. Let's dine her. Right. Dine her up. Like, hey, grandma, hurry the fuck up. How long you gonna live forever? You gonna outlive everybody? No, give back, bitch. Oh, well, you know. You know how it is. No, but I do Incredible. think there's like some tribes where they eat their, their dead folk. And it's kind of like now you have them inside of you. And uh, it's not pretty. It's not... Um, it's just, it's not ideal, but you gotta respect people's culture. Sometimes, the culture of a person is we're gonna eat our people, and that's part of how we keep them inside of us. And if you think about it, it's not that much different from like keeping the ashes of a, of a loved one, you know. Sorry, no, I had a sorry. little a little visitor. You have a visitor. I have this yeah. <laughs> We're good. We're good. We can we're keep good. going. We can yeah. keep going. Okay. And did you get scared? Uh, about my visitor? Yeah. No. Okay. I mean, no. She's she's getting ready for when we have to dine her. Okay. When dine. she passes. Dine. Isn't it like 11 in the morning where you are? No, yeah, no, like when she passes, she was oh. more concerned of when, what we're going to. Damn, okay, okay, you were going dark there. Okay, okay, no, it's cool. <laughs> it's cool, it's cool. Uh, <laughs> no, but I, like, I actually find it that weird that we don't hear more of communities that do this. Because I understand we live in a world where everybody wants to be offended by everything, but you have to tolerate it. If, you know, for example, in the Midlands of Venezuela and Colombia, People fuck donkeys. That's the truth. That's a fact. There's statistical facts. I think there's about 300 cases a year of, uh, you know, donkey abuse. Animal brutality. Donkey abuse. Or, 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 or animal <laughs> sensuality. I mean, people, there's different ways to look at it. Now... Is it is there something that we condone, that we stand behind? Mm. No pun intended. No. We don't. But do we respect and tolerate different cultures in different parts of the world? A, to each their own. I can't be the police of everybody. So if there's a group of people that are like, hey, we're into bodies mm. of the ultimate animal, the apex predator, humans. Are you really, do you, are you in a standpoint morally? Are you in a moral castle that you can say those guys, they shouldn't be doing that? Or should you look within, see what are your own faults and shut the fuck up? Hashtag cannibalism <laughs> is all right. <laughs> I was going to go somewhere else, but you're right. You're right. I mean, take it wherever, you know. No, no. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> it's better I don't. <laughs> I've learned my lesson. He learned. He's learned. He's learned. He's learned. I mean, Chef Maurice has evolved. But you feel me like Sometimes. as a chef yourself, 
even if it's, I mean, I understand this is not where you're going. This is not the type of thing that you're into. But like just on a chef level for like culinary curiosity, don't you think it would be like, damn, if like that was a thing, I could discover different meat textures. It's like if you start working with, um, what are these fucking animals from Australia? The um, ostrich. Oh. Ostrich meat. Yeah, they have a lot of ostrich. Or kangaroos. Mm. Fuck it, kangaroos. Kangaroo meat is is not as common in the rest of the world, but it is a lot in Australia. You as a chef, let's say you go into start working in a restaurant, you know, three stars Michelin. They specialize in game meat. That's deer, you know, that's wild animals. That's a fucking kangaroo. And you're like, damn, I'm starting to work with this new cut. They have this texture. It's like it's like pork, but at the same time, it's like uh, it's like a cow, but it has this grease type and it's like it has a taste. And because they're in the wild and they have pouches, it tastes a little sweet, but at the same time, a, a little tart. And you're like, damn, I really like this experience where I'm like becoming a better chef because I'm learning about this. Mm. You can have the same discovery, but with human meat and maybe you're missing out. Does that make maybe, sense at all? Maybe. I, yeah, I, I just don't want to be, I don't know. I just want it to be like a very end of the world situation where I have to do that. Not on a day-to-day -day basis, right? Okay, but let's say we come to a situation <laughs> let's say we come to a situation where you kinda have then to Then we have to. Then we have to. Right. If you have to because we're in the Andes or whatever. Right. Would you at least have fun with it and make it a thing? Like hey guys, oh, yeah. tonight we're having tacos. It's taco night. Well if we're in the Andes, yeah I, I'll treat my boys to a nice Boys, I, boys dinner, you know? Right. Taco Tuesday. What are we eating? You know, wacky Wednesday. <laughs> you know, we're eating Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> we're eating Robertico. Robertico, it was always a little wild one, you know? <laughs> Tonight, a medium rare. Uh, Robertico. Robertico. Robertico's Cuban. He has a little taste to him. <laughs> Mojo incluido. Yeah, I mean, you have to. You have to make it fun. Uh, in the situation, I guess. I, Not to try I, to survive, I, you kind of have to. I really hope I'm never in this situation. <laughs> Chip yeah, I, guess, like, I don't know. <laughs> I think you would thrive. I think you're selling yourself short and you would thrive and you would cut up those bodies like you're a motherfucking G. <laughs> that, that could happen, yeah. That could Shit, I, I see you with the knives like, this guy hasn't died already, but let's do this. Maybe with the, with the skin, we do some. Robert, nice you're talking too much shit. <laughs> we can do a, a tacos de lengua. That's, so the, that's huge in Mexico. A nice uh, cachete, carrillera. Carrillera, cheek. cheek. Yeah, I could definitely. We can definitely eat good if I'm in that situation. We're and I mean, and, and you will be moral about it in the sense like you're going to honor the body and eat everything in it and use it all. We have to, yeah. You know, even the skin, you can make a coat out of it. I mean, this guy, Robert Tico, you carry it. I mean, that's pretty fucking sick. That's like a Texas Chainsaw Massacre type shit. But I mean, again, I don't want to judge. I don't want to be Judge Judy in this bitch. I want to tolerate. You know who I am? Mm. I'm tolerating Tommy. I'm not, I'm not Judge Jude. I'm not Judge Judy. Caso Cerrado, what's your name? Ta -ta! <laughs> La Laura in America. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I want to I wanna tolerate. And tolerating means there's some people that are crazy and do some weird shit. And you got to, you know, like people that are in like multi-relationships. Yeah. They're eating meat everywhere. <laughs> but until what point do you tolerate this kind of behavior? <laughs> I mean, it depends, you know what I mean? I mean, it, it's just... Let's start from the basis of there's people who eat dogs and cats. Right. I mean, there's well, I mean, still I mean, we're not going to say anything, but it's in the Chinese places. I did not say that. I mean, that's where the <laughs> documentaries have come out of. I mean, why? I can't say that the things that I've seen. You can. Okay. There's um, a fucking festival in China where they eat dogs. There's a festival. Like, imagine going to, imagine going to fucking Coachella. <laughs> But there's a bunch of dogs in grills. Instead I mean, that's pretty fun. I mean, I mean, once you get past the weirdness of the dogs, it's pretty fire. 
You'll see the Grand Dane show. And there's a lot there. Uh, it's not more, it's more than it's just more like they chop it up. But you know, this what I'm trying to say is that it might seem extreme, but we need to tolerate everybody. We need to really be tolerant of people and respect people's different opinions. Am I, I going like, a little bit extreme here? Okay, I'm a bit. I like a little... this woke agenda that you have now. Yeah, I mean, I just wanna because you know what the thing is, the lefties. Mm. You know when somebody says the lefties you know they automatically don't like the lefties right <laughs> if they refer to them as, as such the lefties the fucking dumb lefties <laughs> they think they're tolerant they're not they don't tolerate anything i tolerate everything how how far do i tolerate i tolerate cannibalism cannibalism no i think that's cannabis no not cannabis i mean i tolerate cannabis <laughs> I mean, not myself. Like, I, I tolerate it so much because I do it so much that I'm tolerating. No, I don't mean that. I mean, I tolerate people that do cannabis. But I also tolerate cannibalism, which is... Okay. And there's also cannabis cannibalism when it's you smoke weed and you eat a person. But that's another story <laughs> for another day. <laughs> All right? Well, yeah. I mean, it got a little bit dark there at the end. But we brought or... it back. But we brought it back. Just don't... Try not to eat your friend. Yeah. I mean, chop them up. Throw them in the, I don't know, the lake. But don't eat them. Don't eat them. <laughs> yeah. All right. Chef Maurice. Sorry. Much love. Peace. Peace.